standing on the platform of truth. Pioneer Health and Missions. Precious Father, we ask for your blessing as we're going to open your word, that you give us wisdom and help us understand your scriptures as it has to do with eternal life. Help us understand who are we to worship and who is our only true God. I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. How readest thou? How do you read the scriptures? How do I read the scriptures? Am I reading just as the scripture says? Or are we adding to what the scripture says? This is very important, as we shall see, because it has to do with eternal life. If we add to it, the scripture says that the place will be added to us. But we shall see that if we just obey the word of God just as it reads, there is no way we can be confused. We're going to see a scenario of what happened when Jesus told a man, How readest thou the scriptures? In Luke chapter 10, verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? Here's the question. How readest thou? How do you read? Continues to say, and he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Obeying God's word will help us understand who are we to worship, and not only that, it will help us to inherit eternal life. We must obey the word just as it reads. Jesus talks about man-made commandments because man adds to the scriptures and put words that are not really there. Who are we to worship? Who is the one true God? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it. No matter where we should go, we are to teach and obey them. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I commanded thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged, just like Jesus says that, and thou shalt live. Obeying his words will help us have eternal life. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath Promise thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thine soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee, these they shall be in thine heart. And not only that, he said, he said, and thou shalt teach them diligently, precisely unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. These are the words from God to his people. We are to teach it precisely, just as he said it, 
just as he told us who are we to worship. And in this case, he says, Hear, O Israel, our God is one, one Lord. Now, we're going to let the scriptures tell us who is our one Lord, our one God. Today, many believe that this has to do with more than one person. That this is talking about a unity. But if we read it, it clearly says one. Now, this is the Old Testament. Let us have Jesus explain to us if this, in reality, has to do with more than one, or actually one, just as it reads. In Mark, chapter 12, 28, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them, reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And we're going to see what is going on right here. See, right before this verse, it was in regards to how they were reading the scriptures. And the way they were reading it was not the right way. In verse 24, he says, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? This man thought they were reading the scriptures very well, but we're going to see that this is happening today. Many think to believe they are reading the scriptures when it's a, they say it's a plurality in Deuteronomy 6.4, but we're going to let Jesus himself explain to us who are we to worship. He continues to say right here in verse 29, And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. This is very important because in the Old Testament, one means one. If it wasn't so, Jesus would have said they or them to imply more than one. When it comes to one God, that is exactly what it means, one. Just like in the Old Testament, Jesus in the New Testament tells us it is one. And he continues to say, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him, with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Like I was saying, today many not only add to the scriptures, but also correct Jesus. What I mean is that today many get Deuteronomy 6.4 and say that it refers to more than one person because of the word Elohim is plurality. But Elohim could also be used in singular when God also used Elohim to imply to Moses being a God before Pharaoh. He's used the same word, but we know that he, Moses is only one person. And we see how this scribe uses the pronouns him he doesn't say they. Now, Jesus, if he's wrong, if he's using the terms incorrectly, the pronouns incorrectly, Jesus will come and say, it is not him, but rather it is they. But did Jesus do this? And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly or thoughtfully, he said unto him, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him, any question. Jesus did not correct him. He didn't tell him this is a plurality and it is more than one person. He said he answered thoughtfully. He answered right. There was no need to correct him. Today, that's what many men are doing. They're not only adding to the scriptures, they're correcting the words of Je Jesus. Jesus and the scribe were right. It was only one person. And we're going to see who is this one God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there be gods many and lords many. 
many believe this, that there's more than one, that there's a God in three persons. Now, we're going to read right here how many read the scriptures today. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I hope you caught that, because the scripture does not say that. But man-made commandment is adding to the Word of God. They say there is one God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But just like Jesus told the lawyer, how readest thou the Scriptures? The Scripture clearly tells me, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. This is the one God. It is the Father. He is the source of everything. And everything flows, even His life, flows through His Son. So, the Father is the one God. This is the one God Deuteronomy 6.4 is speaking of. And this is the same one God that Jesus was speaking to the scribe. See, in Ephesians, we read that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ... The Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. This one God is the God of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has a God, and it is His Father, it is His own Father. See, in Revelation 3, verse 12, Jesus, speaking of the God, the God of the Bible, the God of Deuteronomy 6 4, He calls Him my God. See, Soon Jesus will show us the unseen God, whom no one has seen. This also the scripture tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only pontiff, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. The only one who has immortality. Jesus died, and his father raised him from the grave. The Father has never died. He has immortality. He has no beginning. He is the source of all. In John 1.18, this is what it tells us. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Jesus is the only one. He came here to declare His Father, who He is. The words that I speak are not my own, he said. But whatever the Father saith, these were the words that he repeated. The Father is the one God of Deuteronomy 6.4. Jesus Christ, just like in John chapter 10, verse 30 to 33, calls him his Father. He's rightfully to be worshipped. Jesus is God. He inherited this nature. We must worship him. The Father said it. He said, worship Him. And Jesus is telling us who our God is, the God of Deuteronomy 6.4. The one true God, the unseen, the invisible, who nobody has seen, the one who has immortality. That is the God we worship, the Father. How readest thou now the scriptures? I hope now that we have seen the evidence that there is only one God, the Father, we may also teach this, just like he told the Israelites to teach. To teach and to live it. There is only one God. God bless you, and may we continue to press on knowing the truth. The God of the Bible.